Hey there, Rather Car Guy here, and today let's get licensed. So a couple months ago, I put out a video on how to install a CB slash GMRS slash ham radio into the Xterra, and that's right here if you want it. And I thought I'd follow up with a short video on getting the GMRS license through the FCC. So what's GMRS? Well, GMRS is General Mobile Radio Service. Now there's a lot of different services that the FCC regulates, uh, but for the sake of this video, we're only gonna talk about a couple. On the low power and sort of short distance communication, you have like CB and FRS, and then you have GMRS, and then for the bigger, longer distance stuff, you have ham. CBs and FRS, like walkie talkies, like two way radios, are great for really short distance communication. They call these services like sort of like licensed by rule, where you don't have to actually go get a license, but they have rules outlined that people are supposed to follow, but you know, almost never do. Then you have GMRS, those are gonna be higher powered than the CB and FRS radios, but it is gonna require a license. And then even more powerful and even longer distance is gonna be ham, and those require licenses with examination. Getting a GMRS license is a good idea for a couple reasons. Obviously, it allows you to use a GMRS radio, that's the whole point. They also allow for the use of repeaters, so you can hopefully talk over much longer distances than you would be able to with a CB radio. And also with the licensing, there at least is some accountability there. You do need to get licensed to use it, so there's kind of a barrier to entry, so it's not just this wild, wild west like CB is. And with ham, you're talking about a lot more power and a lot more distance, but of course a lot more licensure and uh, examinations and different classes of license and all that, but those are the types of radios that when you hear about people talking to like the International Space Station from their house, those would be ham radios. So GMRS is a good balance. You get more power and distance, but there's not a bigger barrier to entry like there is with ham. There's no examinations you need to take and all that jazz. You basically just go to the FCC website, sign up for it. It gets issued to you for, I think, 10 years. So speaking of that, let's go do that right now. To get started, just head to Google and look up the GMRS licensing, and it should be the very first link, GMRS under the FCC. Click that bad lad and you're brought to the GMRS section of the FCC website. In here, you're gonna find a little bit of information about what it is, a little bit about the licensing, the channels that it runs on, and your operations basically how it's gonna be used. If you're interested in the full list of rules, I would definitely check them out. If you click on licensing, you'll see here it says they're located in 47 CFR part 95 subpart E. Uh, don't click this link. If you click this, it's just gonna bring you here and you're gonna have to like dig into it. Just grab that information and just throw it into Google. And once you throw it into Google, it'll just give you the exact information right away. There we go. And then click on that and it brings you directly to it. Much easier talks about all the regulations, how to get your license, all the usage rules, everything in here. I'll throw the link to the FCC website and the rules down below in the description. So back at the FCC website, if you go to licensing and databases, you're going to see the FCC registration system and it's called CORS. So go ahead and click on that. And right away, it tells you there's a new system. So if you click on the updated version, it's going to come here and bring you to, I mean, it says updated, looks like it's from 1998, but whatever. From here, you want to go in the center where it says need username. If you haven't registered yet, you want to register. So just fill out the form and click create account. Once you complete that, it's gonna tell you that you sent a confirmation to your email address. You just have to go to your email account, open it up and confirm it. Here's the email, we click on it. And it just says here to click the link to confirm it. It says your address has been verified and we can now sign in. So let's head into course. Next up, we need an FRN, an FCC registration number. So if you don't have one already, you want to register a new FRN. Once here, it says, are you registering as an entity or an individual? We're an individual. And is your contact address within the US? Yes. Next up, our individual FRN or restricted user it says, select only for media bureau, commercial slash non-commercial ownership. That ain't me, I'm up here. Basically any individual conducting business with the FCC. And then look at another whole form to fill out. So fill that out and submit it. Once submitted, you're gonna get an FRN number and just keep that for your records. Scroll down, click continue, and you're brought home. From here, we wanna to go to the FCC license manager. And the quickest way is to go back over here. Hopefully you can see that and click FCC. From there, click on licensing and databases, and then about licensing. And then in here, it's called the ULS, the universal licensing system, click on that. And then in here, it says file online right in the center. Let me zoom in. There you go, file online for a new license. From there, we're gonna put in our FRN, and then we're gonna put in the password that we just created earlier when creating this CORS account. Then click Submit. Once in here, you can say Apply for New License in the upper left-hand corner. And you wanna come in and you wanna choose your license, which I believe it's Z, yep, ZA, GMRS, General Mobile Radio. Click Continue. Then it's gonna ask you a couple questions. Does this filing request special temporary authorization? No, I want authorization for 10 years. Is the applicant exempt? No. 
exempt from these fees. No, 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 we're not exempt from anything. We're going to pay. And then look at that. We get to fill out a form for a third time. So fill out your form and click continue. Next up, it says, has the applicant or any party of this application or any party directly or indirectly controlling the applicant ever been convicted of a felony by any state or federal court? The answer is no. Click continue. Down here, it's just a summary of your application and now it's gonna ask for money. Isn't it amazing that most licenses don't actually require any education or skill or anything like that? They just want your money for it? Kinda of odd, huh? Down here, just gives you a review of what you're agreeing to. Make sure you read that before agreeing to it. Otherwise, fill it out and click submit application. Now we have our confirmation, but don't worry, it's not official until you pay them money. So it's gonna bring us over to course. Let me click on that little button there. So we're back at course, go ahead and sign in. Man, this is so simple and easy to navigate, huh? Then in here, we supposedly have some place where we're gonna pay. Where is that? Bills and fees, it looks like. There you go, probably that. ULS pay fees, okay? Throw in our FRN number, continue to pay, and perfect, there it is, okay. Check that little box there, hit continue. We selected the file, now we have to hit continue again to pay. So I'm just gonna pay by credit card. I'm sure you've done all this before. It's like buying on Amazon, but a heck of a lot less fun. All right, click continue. Again, just giving us a little summary here. I want you to check that box to authorize the payment and continue. All right, it says thank you for your payment. You can print the form if you wanna be sure. I might just do that because, you know, this thing is absolutely half-assed. And now I'm gonna click go back. And what I'm hoping is over here, if I come back to the, the license manager, the ULS, that'll show that I paid, let's see. Um, you currently have no licenses associated with your FRN. Awesome. Let's give it a couple minutes and see if I get something in my email. All right, back in the ULS, if I go to my applications, it says submitted by the applicant, but not initially processed by the FCC. So I'm probably just gonna wait a little bit and see how everything sort of pans out. So I waited, waited, and waited, and just got on with my day. And then about 12 hours later at three in the morning, uh, an email came in. And so it says here that it's to notify you that you, you know, that the application was granted, and it wants you to click on this little authorization link. So if we click on that little link here, it brings you to your browser, but then it automatically downloads a PDF. Open that PDF and here is our authorization. It shows your FRN, your call sign, and uh, when, it's, when it expires, which is 12, 15 of 2033, so 10 years from today. So to be safe, I'm just gonna print this out and have a copy of it in my vehicle that I plan on using the radio in. You'll notice it also has a call sign. There's some rules surrounding when to use your call sign. I think when you first start transmitting and then like every 15 minutes or something, but um, I'll put a link to all of the rules that you need to follow down below in the description. So make sure you read those before you start operating your GMRS radio. But honestly, that's it. It's a pretty simple process once you get through like the super cumbersome website. But other than that, it's just the $35 fee, get it paid and you get your license. They did make some changes to the rules. So apparently once you get this license, anyone in your immediate family can actually use the radios as well. So it's not just for you specifically. And this isn't radio dependent, right? So we didn't put any information in on a specific radio or anything like that. It's just for you to be able to use any GMRS radio. So that's it. If you're looking for a radio that's gonna get a lot more reach than a CB, but you don't wanna go, well, you don't wanna go ham on getting a ham license. Oh God, that was so bad. Then this is a great option for you. I hope this video helped. If it did, please go ahead, scroll down, click that like button. You can also say thanks by buying me a beer. Go ahead and scroll down, click the super thanks button to do that. Make sure you subscribe for more content like this and we'll see you in the next one.